At the very least, we can handshake on the matchup and get something that we are fine playing. Yeah, so the, the Gwen going to be comfortable. Uh, as you say, though, the Jace has been something we were talking about this in the previous chapter, like that has worked into the Gwen here in the LPL. The Shy, certainly known to be a keen Jace enthusiast. So with the Diego locked in for SUFM, could maybe go for a priority bot lane pick or something along those lines. And then third pick, you could maybe see that Jace come through. I mean, if we don't get Callisto or Lucian locked in at all through like the first phase of picks, that will be absolutely crazy. I know something we've hit on a lot for RNG side specifically is the fact that it feels like Ming needs to be on something that, that uh, is a primary engage role and that the rest of the other members of RNG don't really play for that. Weibo going to say, screw both those picks, go straight towards the Ezreal for Huan Fong. And now for RNG, matching uh, jungle with the Lee Sin. Nautilus coming through, and it is what we said. Both <laughs> Lucian and Callista making it through the first phase of picks and bands. The what is Shai this? Not interested in a Jace though. Still go for the top lane counter pick, but it's a Jax locked in against this Gwen. Uh, he is actually Counter Strike. When you press that, you'll enter an evasive stat. I'm not going to do the whole thing. But, uh, <laughs> no, please. <laughs> the Jax locked in for the Shy. We know how powerful he could be on that kind of pick. I will say, just back on your AD carry point, I'm kind of surprised by the Ezreal because I feel like Huan Fung is one of the players in this meta that. Like, you want them to pick Callista. You would love to be against the Callista because he's a Draven player. I mean, even, even just them being the ones to pick something like the Callista, right? Because so far, Weibo are 3-0 on the Callista. Huanfeng has a 42 KDA. 42 KDA, 100% win rate on the Callista. It's been his most played this, this split. But uh, instead of opting to not go for and, and saying, hey, we don't really care about those picks coming through, m maybe even just targeting Gala specifically, saying, hey, you're not as proficient on these picks as other things you like to lean on because we're seeing now Weibo banning out Gala's signature Kaisa. It's been his best pick his whole career so far in the LPL. And the fact that they have the Nautilus right alongside it, I think would set up well for that pick. But now just going to ban out the LeBlanc. So still, both of those AD carries will just go through. Yep. Huang Fong playing to outrange them, it seems, as he gets rid of the Kaiser for the matchup, then leaves the Lucian and the Callista. I feel like you're you're safe from the Lucian anyway, right? Because we've already got the Nautilus, not the Nami. So Lucian not really been a pick that's been picked alongside aggressive supports like this recently. Uh, the Callista could still be an option, though, with the Braum being taken off of the board as well. So defensive support there removed from RNG. See where On's going to go on this one. Things like Rakan would be available, which we know On very proficient at. Yeah, it seems like they're still waiting to see what the full bot lane matchup will be. Because even things like Karma theoretically are still open, but obviously will be in danger of those all-ins coming through from the side of RNG. RNG going to end up with an incredibly strong 3v3, considering that they do have the Nautilus and the, the Lee Sin locked in so far. And now, I mean, it seems like even Gala a bit unsure what he wants to go for. If they do end up locking in the Jinx, it would be something that at least matches uh, the range coming out from the opposite side, right? Going to get something like a Rapid Fire Cannon later on. But no, just going to keep all inning on the fact of being able to dive onto the enemy champions, right? Aphelios, we know once he gets the Gale Force able to come through, Gale Force into the Moonlight Vigil, hoping you could just burst out the enemy side. And now we're going to have to pick into the Azir matchup. Uh, things like Corky technically still open. Not too many all-in champions. I think that fit well with what RNG want to go for, considering that the LeBlanc is taken off the board. It looks like a bit of roaming and also a bit of scaling. You're up against the Azir. Why not go for the Corky? This is the ultimate standard boring mid lane Azir versus Corky. Just infinite wave clear. The Rakan we talked about before being hovered here, but certainly you want some engage and looks like it will be the Rakan in the end. So two birds locked in on the side of Weibo, but I just want to quickly mention Angel, an absolute prolific Azir player here in the LPL. This guy is a playmaker on this here as well. He does not just wait for the late game. This guy will make plays from six, will go for the swoop and boops, and will make things happen from that mid lane. So keep your eyes on Angel's Azir. It's not as boring as a lot of them. Yeah, and for Weibo, right? I think having some potential for early action, especially in that bot side, considering they have the Rakan, uh, still, I think I expect a slower pace coming out from them as compared to RNG on the opposite side, considering that they have the lease in. So I think a lot more potent opportunities in both top and bot to come from RNG. Mid lane should be a bit of a stalemate, right? Would be very hard to set up any plays. I think until you hit the level six mark on the Azir, where you can see things like the Sharima shuffle coming in, trying to set up for the Viego to come through. 
But RNG, I think, definitely indexing a bit heavier to the 5v5, to we know for the side of Weibo. Big over 1 forward composition, considering you have the Jax. Jax is someone who functions... I think better in team fights and like a lot of other split pushers we have like Fiora, right? Because you can just get into the thick of things, pop your ultimate, throw the counter strike and just leap in, try and lock many members down. But yeah, both comps kind of, I think similar areas in terms of when they will come online. Weibo opting a little bit more into side lanes. RNG though, definitely about having that straight up front to back. Yeah, we'll see. You know, we talked about the fact that we'd seen bottom lane dives. We talked about the aggression from Bonfong and Honor with SOFM diving alongside them doesn't feel like that is what Weibo are looking for today. It feels like they're going back to a much more passive, slower play style with a lot of scaling on the board. But perhaps opportunities in that top side with the Jax Viego certainly make things happen. Yeah, and it would be a little bit different considering we show the Shy typically not getting all too much attention from SOFM in that lane. Also interesting that the Shy didn't opt into the Ignite. Uh, obviously, back when we used to have Jax picked as the counter to Gwen a lot, you would usually run the Ignite as well and look for those heavy trades earlier on. It's on. It's the Ward. I can pull a flash. Off here, the root comes on out. And, uh, oh. I got a bit of a jolt in my feet. I'm going to assume he used the grand entrance over the wall he did. to get out. He did. He, d he W'd over the wall. But yeah, same thing happened to me. He just kind of uh, he got hooked, and then he was magically yeah. over the wall. Uh, I was wonder I was wondering if RNG would have enough first to maybe like try and force him uh, to have to not only use W but also a flash to get away. But it's luckily, for grand entrance is enough. Out of hand. Like, the fact that he can just teleport over walls now it's not okay. A okay. uh, bit of a trade at the top side as well. I don't actually know if the viewers feet jolted like ours did. So in case anyone like we missed a couple of seconds, that's why I'm making that joke. I don't actually think Ricardo's uh, big book like this. Um, but yeah, I'm. Lyric, I hate to say it, I'm anticipating a bit of a slower early game here. I th I definitely think in terms of team play that we, we should expect the slower early game. It's just coming out from Weibo, like you said. Uh, we know the Shy, though, going to look for these heavy trades consistently, use that counter strike to get in range. And yeah, I, I feel like with the Shy, it it's never really a slow early game coming in, at least in regards to trades like we see here. Yeah, good little trade from him. And crucial, the on like, Jax is one of these champions that... People don't think of him as a champion that has to push the lane, but quite often you'll find that Jax will automatically push the lane because you have to go for these heavy trades with the Counter-Strike. You want the minions to be hitting you while using the yep. Counter-Strike so it maxes damage as well. And it means that you're probably going to hit the whole wave. You're probably going to be pushing in. So keep your eyes towards that top lane and towards Wei, although he is pathing down to start this one off. So perhaps an opportunity for SOFM up on that top side instead, but I'd anticipate it's just going to be a trade of Skulls for now. Yeah, and we can see both teams are already getting their vision down to what size of the map they're going to be playing for, right? Shahu walking into River, getting that that ward down uh, in Bobside River. Angel doing the same thing up towards topside where SOFM is now. Looks like Breeze should be able to get the wave into turret, but still might be a small window for SOFM to try to find a gank. On the receiving end, I feel like it should be a lot harder for a way to make anything happen in the bot side, considering both Juan Fong and On safely under turret right now. Yeah, chance for a cheater recall here from Breathe as well. I would anticipate that he just walks back to lane rather than TPing since they had managed to crash that counter wave up by so much time and now that wave will bounce back towards him. So should miss minimal CS. And just look at the CS number for the Shy, right? He's going to have that advantage anyway. So really nicely done. Good control of the lane from Breathe so far. It's... Uh, Kind of the polar opposite of the way that you expect the Shy to play the lane, right? Where you don't really anticipate him going for just small CS advantages. You, ex you anticipate him going for the ult. So speaking yeah, of which, on. Good damage on the bottom side. Gala taking a bit of a chunk of shield from on means that it is a positive trade. Yeah, just nice, you know, quick little in and out. W into the E to be able to back off. Also nice they were careful because Wei did stay on the map. Uh, just went to guarantee having that bot side scuttle. Checking to see if SOFM had already been in the bot side jungle. And pings are coming down onto bot lane right now. SOFM making his way down. On will have his combo up and available if they want to look for the all-in. This could be good for the side of Weibo. Ming and Gala too far forwards here. But Ming flashes heal immediately used as well. That'll be the end of the play. But two summoners used. That's going to be very nice news for Weibo. Perhaps an opportunity for a repeat play in a couple of moments. Yeah, it's even one that RNG could have expected, right? Uh, you you knew that SOFM was up towards topside and was looking for the recall, of course, would go down because that's where his camps would once again respawn. They even were able to get the previous wave into turret because Wei 
was in the area and made sure they were able to do so, but still wanting to stay in lane, wanting to stay aggressive, opening them up for the game to come out from that sword family. Oh, look at this aggressive trading, but the Shy takes a tower shot here. Does have a ward in River. Knows that he needs to be a little cautious. In fact, that River is lit up because there's a scuttle crab taken as well as another ward. So uh, the Shy completely safe on this one. Uh, I think it comes out. That means the Shy is just going to back off completely. Knows that he can't do anything. Problem is, the wave is not getting any better for the Shy. It's not crashed yet this game. And so it'll continue to push the wards. Yeah, really rough. And Breathe even solving TP as compared to the Shy on the opposite side. So it can continue to build up the CS lead. We've seen Angel be able to have control of mid. Pretty much standard for the matchup, but all. Oh, that was really close. Yeah. If Ming had been able to find it, that could have potentially been a skirmish in favor of RNG, because if you looked at Gala, Gala was much closer than Huan Fong would have been on the opposite side. Next flash over the wall from Ming, just making sure that he's going to be safe on this one. As the Weibo players retreat once more. And I feel like we are seeing a bit of proactivity from Weibo here, right? To be fair to them, like SOFM making the play to the bottom side, blowing the summoners, now getting some invades onto RNG as well, or at least trying to. And it has bought them space on this bottom side to go for an early Drake. So Weibo still pushing the, the envelope forwards and, and making sure that they're the ones being aggressive. They're the ones that are setting the pace of this game so far. My only concern is that, yes, they're finding a small incremental advantage on the bottom side. Look at the difference in CS on that top side. Yes, there is a big wave, but the Shy is starting to struggle in this matchup. There's 12, I believe, 12 or 13 minions sitting there for the Shy right now. So, I mean, if okay. you can manage to pick everything up, should be able to get it back pretty close to home. And Waymore, the team who I feel like feel more comfortable with their uh, soul lanes being isolated, right? Jax being able to outtrade like we've seen on the top side, even if his wave has been in a bit of a rough position uh, from Way leaning over the last time around. And Angel, we've seen, can just constantly force the wave in with his soldiers since you do have threat on both the wave and Shao at the same time when he walks up. But on now, this is what we hit on. What was so nice from him in the last series. On constantly unlocked from lane, roaming around the map. That's what made Sooning in 2020 work so well was Sword Art doing the same thing. And now on going to look for Breathe. But we'll just end up clearing this award at the end of the day. But as you say, the Shy managing to see us very, very well. And it will mean that he's just about even things up. We'll be slightly behind, but not the end of the world. That's mostly the difference off of that Cheetah recall earlier on. On moving back up, though, he does not match Wei in terms of damage, in terms of utility here. Breathe will be stunned. On going to look for the knockup to follow up on this one, but in comes Wei. This is not a good 2v2 for Weibo as the needle's gone through. Wei jumps forward, kicks him, and now he looks for Ahn as well. Oh, Wei, that was gorgeous to witness. A double for the Lee Sin of RNG. And a 2v2 between a top laner and a jungler and a top laner and a support is just not even... RNG going to win out every single time, even like committing even harder once they had seen Wei show up in topside. I believe On had already known that he was there when he committed with the W, but I'm sure we'll get a replay of that one to find out. Ping's now coming down top is Gala. Beautiful sidestep away from SOFM. Yeah, SOFM won't be able to find the stun there, and it means Gala's completely safe. So no cross map play here from Weibo. They just lose the 2v2 on that top side. And like you said, not an even 2v2. And On didn't realize he was spotted out. That ward from Wei into that river brush was so crucial. Oh, wait. And now both on. teams. Both teams going to posh up towards topside, but aren't you a vision? Yeah, On is on Rakan, but Hex Flash exists, and Ming gets straight onto him. A good knockup, and then dash away from On. Oh, That's going to be Angel. Empress Divide as well. This is a numbers advantage for RNG, but it doesn't seem to matter. Angel looking for more. The soldiers go forward, as does Wei. Double kill comes through, though. Turns it into a triple. Gala stacking up the red and white weapons, but it does not matter. As SOFM on a quadra kill. We're only nine oh. minutes into the game, but the jungler of Weibo does not care. Or does he? No, no, no. 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 No, that was it. That was the moment. That was the pentakill for SOFM, but not able to find oh, it. No. And no it's way. It's gone from bad to worse. Way gets an extra kill off the back of it. Now SOFM has to buy. They don't even get Herald off of this. My God, what a beautiful team fight coming out from SOFM and Angel. But at the end of the day, it doesn't pan out. Still a quadra kill. Like, SOFM will take that every single day of the week. But my God, that penta would have been, would have been sexy. We see here, though. Yeah, I believe On had already seen... Uh, Leeson walking up. I'm not sure. Maybe the Ranger's just slightly out. 
The second they do see him commit, though, we see the Shy flash away instantly. They know that they won't be able to take that 2v2. And then here, you hit on it, Munch. RNG have numbers advantage. They try to all in here onto on, but it gives Angel the perfect window for the Emperor's Divide to come through. And then SOFM in Reset City, killing member after member, able to follow through. Amazing flash in the, into the W to lock Xiao Hu down. And then Gala trying to finish off the Shy isn't able to in the end. And uh, it just hurt so much that he wasn't able to finish this one off. If that ult lands as well, if the damage from that ult hits over the wall, Bree that she dies there. It was so close to happening for SOFM. And yet, so far, bit of a heartbreaker, but ultimately, four and zero. He's going to take that every single day of the week, like you say. The Herald did go the way of Wei, though. And I feel like we have a proper jungle match upon our hands now. 3-1 and 1 Lee, 4-0 oh, and OVA go. A Herald in the pocket of Wei as well. So he'll be able to somewhat even out that gold difference. And that means that we have op uh, opportunity to carry from both sides of the jungle. Yeah, and... For, for these teams is, oh, Xiaohu. Has to use the oh, wow. oh, that's huge. Yeah, massive play coming out from Weibo, just setting up around mid, using their control ward well. Uh, and now should have perfect setup for the Dragon to be able to come through. Okay, another opportunity onto On here. He's kicked back. He's going to be knocked up. Goes over to Angel. Still goes down, though. And now numbers advantage for RNG. Angel trying to get DPS out, but he's an early game as here. Doesn't do that much just yet. Hooked in, but it was all a bait. And Ming forced to flash instead. SOFM under the tower. And Weibo will survive. They lose on. And RNG now in control of the river. Yeah, and Weibo playing a little bit too loose. I think it would have been nice if they could have just leaned down towards spot side first with the pressure they guaranteed in mid and try to open up Huan Fong to be able to join in the party as well. But more trading at top. All in on the top side. The Shy has to jump away. Breathe won't be in range for the third needle work, but that was a little too close for comfort for the Shy. Yeah, a little bit dicey coming out from there. Still going to wait towards the Shy to get towards that first item. And I still feel like RNG's comp going to do uh, a little bit better once we do get into those straight up 5v5s. Try and kite out with, with the range you have. Again, big packages able to come through into Moonlight Vigils. Just like huge Wombo combos. And for Weibo, they have a lot of range to play with, which is nice coming out from Azir and Ezreal. And you obviously have the resets to follow up. But on being your only engage, Angel gonna have to follow up and put himself in harm's way to keep finding those same Emperor's Divides that he's found in the past. And that could quickly turn into Wei or Xiaohu just getting some big burst onto you. And everything can go sideways for the side of Weibo very quickly. It certainly can, but like we said before, like Angel is a player that on Azir is more than willing to play like he's an early game champion. He's more than willing to be the engage for his team. The Shy jumping away to the minion wave. Nicely played here. Just going for those heavy trades time and time again. As SOFM moves in. This time it's an even 2v2. And this time Wei is the target. SOFM ult available. If they can find another window, it's not going to happen for the time being. Yeah, Weibo not going to overcommit, which is really nice because they know that Angel was going for a recall and doesn't have TP available. And Xiaohu now matching this play on top side. Now, aren't you just going to drop the Herald and try to finish off this top lane turret? They really want it. Way gets caught by the stun of SRFM. The more used there, but this charge will go on through, and I think it'll be three plates taken as well. Just one more hit from the Herald would secure it, as the minions will be able to get that last plate down. So four plates taken in the top side here, and Way with a bounty. In fact, both junglers <laughs> with a bounty at this point in the game. And it's feeling like a very even mid-game, which I'm excited for, Lyric, because, you know, with Corky as it, you anticipate super slow, super boring gameplay. Not today. We're getting roams from both mid laners, both junglers being really aggressive, really proactive. We're lining up for an exciting mid-game. I was going to say, I never really expect slow games to come through anymore. I feel like even the teams we called slow last split, for some reason, on this durability patch where every other region is playing more slow, LPL have just taken it up to another level. A lot of really Fiesta level ones with the top lane clip the other day with the extended fight over red buff in week one, which was like three minutes long. I don't know what happened with this patch, but it made us even more bloodthirsty and aggressive. More blood for the blood god. <laughs> I guess the thought process was, oh, we're tankier now. That means we can fight for longer. <laughs> um, is Freed going to be rewarded for his laning prowess with a tower? And that's the first tower of the game. Obviously, the Herald helping out a little bit there. Doing uh, three quarters of the tower's health is always going to be handy. 
Uh, but in the meantime, a lot of pressure on the bottom side in favor of Weibo. But the fact that they didn't get the first two Drakes back to back is going to hurt them a bit. Like, they could have been close to Soul Point at this stage, but weren't able to maintain control. Way spot just as that ward dies. Yeah, still for Weibo, though, I feel like they are banking a little bit more on the scaling of the Jax being able to come through. I definitely think Gwen providing more in the mid game, especially now that he is up in item right. Uh, the Shy very close to his Divine Sunder, but the fact that the Breathe already having the Rift Maker, if a Skirmish breaks out right now, we'll just be able to provide more in terms of a Skirmish. So this is where we want to see RNG kind of take advantage of that timing to be able to get a bit more done with this Lee Sin and Swen. Sin can find those uh, opportunities, but the Shy and Breathe just... I swear to God, every time we go up to this top lane, we see a trade between these two top laners. And every time it's just about even, unless Breathe has the Ignite and has the ult available, and then he finds those small advantages over the Shy. But it's going to be all about the team fight with a Gwen, with a Jax, right? You, you anticipate that later on in the game, they're going to be real good at uh, getting onto the back line and dishing out major damage. I feel like Jax and Gwen, honestly, in a team fight, have a similar MO, like where they want to get on the back line and they just want to rail in carries. I feel like it's similar, but also very different because I feel like Gwen can do whatever she wants in a team fight. You can get on the back line, you can play as a front liner, you can flank, you can you can do anything. The Shy though, very much wanting to find his way onto Gala or Shahu with that counter strike though, right? So I, I feel like it's not a fair comparison just because of Gwen being <laughs> when a jack out. of all trades, master of all. Jack came out season one, Gwen came out season 12. It's not a fair fight. Or season 11, season 10. I don't even know when she came up. She came up recently, though. Recently enough. As, uh, we're going to see recess like... across the board. Dragon is just spawning in the whole of Weibo's recess. Yeah, this is going to set up well for RNG. Ming did go back, but still should be able to get here the rest of the time as the other members of RNG. Weibo are the ones who have subtle vision control down now, considering that they do have wards in the bot lane tri brush and around mid lane. So it will be hard for RNG to force their way in. And with Shahu needing mana, it just seems like RNG not even going to contest. Instead, going to send way up towards the top side to try to find another kill onto the Shy. Oh, they're going to try, but the Shy plenty of vision this time around. Two control words. Words? Two control wards to work with. As uh, he'll be able to play. In theory, I mean, be he'll be fair, able to right? play safe. <laughs> He's still going forwards. I do want to be fair to you, right? If there is two control wards, there are two control wards as well. So there you go. True. Control and control. Um, it's true shot barrage in the mid lane. It's, I think part of the problem as well is that I can't really speak properly. I don't say words. I say words. W-E-R-D-S. Because <laughs> I'm from Doncaster. Uh, Donnie Soldier reporting in, as always. And Summer is here. But I can't quote any more of that song because it gets uh, pretty not broadcast safe pretty damn quick. As it's going to be Weibo pushing in to oh. the tower in the mid lane. Gravitim available onto Angel, but no follow-up there. Now the Shy, maybe a bit of revenge in the top side, but that's a lot of damage coming out from B. Trying to turn it around. Oh. Flash from the Shy. Breathe misses the needlework. The Shy waiting for Counter-Strike to be available once more. Has to use it on the mini wave just to not die on this one. But SOFM is here, and he wants his fifth kill of the game. Goes over and just destroys Breathe, who is trying to play around the Blast Cone, but it ain't happening. The fact that Breathe couldn't connect with that last needlework made all the difference. Buys time for SOFM to come up. The Shy doesn't go down. And RNG not in a position to answer on the opposite side of the map, considering that Way was leaning up towards that top lane as well. So we're going to get a replay of it pretty much instantly. Already having the Q stacked up. Gets full damage coming out from there. But nice counter strike by the Shy to be able to get away. And the Shy just kind of constantly weaving in and out, even using that Q to try and dodge out on some damage. And then bam, that was the, the, the critical moment, right? Breathe not able to land that last needlework. Buys time for SOFM to get up here. Puts up with the cheeky, cheeky shenanigans for a bit. Uses the ult, though, and finishes it off once he gets bored. Yeah, just uh, making sure to finish the job there. Two drakes already for Weibo is all. Just gets out safely. And this is just clean Rakan gameplay, right? This is what you expect from a Rakan. you got to be a bit cheeky with it. Has been a bit too cheeky this game, though. Has to be said. Zero and three so far. Uh, a lot of that you know, down to just being I, read I, by RNG. I think it might have been on, but I remember we had, we had a player interview last split where someone pointed out that Rakan is just like the biggest get-out-of-jail-free card. If you're, if you're a support who likes to go get vision by yourself, just play Rakan. 
It's on once again. No! <laughs> Are you sure? He wasn't about even that getting one? vision. Are you sure? About hey, that I, one? I'm I'm quoting the man himself. Oh dear. Well, can't get vision in the mid lane. That's for sure. <laughs> so it just gets completely railed. And that's one thing Nautilus is good at is if you do connect onto the Rakan, the Rakan doesn't get the move again. Oh, big damage coming through onto Way. Very close. SFM flash available if he wants to just hard commit, but it would be a little dicey. Decides against it in the end. Yeah, just look how big SOFM is at this moment as well, right? Force of nature coming through. Uh, about half an item up over his opposing uh, jungler. And now, all this trading coming up towards the top side, but look at the minimap. Both teams posturing around this aggression coming out from their top laners. Yeah, SOFM just going to stealth recall in the... No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> I, do, can you recall in the stealth for Viego? I know you can stealth recall a Twitch, but I don't know how the bog works. Wait, wait, wait. I think we're about to have something. Ah, uh, I got baited again. I thought On was going to, like, flash W or W in, connect some kind of big engage, and then Angel goes over the wall with the Sharima Shuffle, and then something would have been really... Something really... Uh, what's an appropriate word? We'll go with the lame one. Cool. Cool would happen. I think Poggers I had, is, I, is a good one. The kids say that these days, I think. Uh, I, I had a few words in my head, but those words also weren't broadcast friendly. So, yeah, let's go with Poggerinos. <laughs> Poggy Woggies, as Flowers would say. Uh, we are going to see Ming. Perhaps a little too far in, but I don't think Ong's going to go for the play just yet. SOFM just arriving on the scene. Drake up in 50 seconds. I don't think either of these teams is really that interested in Baron right now. The Drake, far more important. Yeah, and so far it is RNG trying to get a bit of control themselves. They've already cleared out vision from their own jungle, at least, right? We see control ward in there now, but there's one ward that they did miss. So Weibo will be able to come into this dragon having some information and having deeper vision down. Does look like Shahu was able to pick up the package, though. So Shahu can be the huge difference maker in this fight. Certainly can. And we'll see if he's going to try to. Just being cleared. Actually, didn't go down, but a control ward going to be used. Xiaohu wants to use that package effectively, wants to be the big playmaker. Ming trying to predict on there. Just takes a big chunk in return, though, is SFM in control of the river for now. The Shy moving over, and look how far back Breathe is. This is 4v5 for now. If the Shy moves forward aggressively, could try and find a flank for himself. As Weibo start this Drake off, RNG still in position to try and contest on body blocking for Huang Fung. The rocket's coming out. Ming goes wide on the hook once oh, again, but SOFM just kicked out of the pit. And now Xiaohu onto the back line here. Angel trying to get damage out on the Azir. The rest of Weibo over the wall, but slowly taken down by the needlework. SOFM chased out by Breed. Angel with the Emperor's Divide and then slides across the lane to escape. But RNG. Way kicking SOFM out of the pit. That was something to behold. Yeah, great to come out from Way. Aren't you just instantly pulling the trigger to make sure that they're able to guarantee that dragon? And for Weibo, I thought they had the right idea of coming into the objective in terms of trying to have the Shy match the Gwen. And like, if it's, let's say, a 1v1 in bot and then a 4v4 here, it's fine. But we see here, Ming going at the flash misses, but Way able to connect with the kick makes it so they get the objective and then Xiaohu with a huge package leaving the Shy in such an awkward place being able to follow up with the ultimate to make sure that he goes down now the numbers advantage able to come through for RNG but Angel able to disengage with that Ember's Divide coming through but does have to flash in the end once the third of the slow from the needlework comes through uh, we might have another fight here as On could be in trouble but zips away keeps himself safe Pong Pong just trying to Clear this wave as fast as possible so that Wavo can move in and try and fight for vision control on the Baron here. RNG, the ones in control of the river right now, with SOFM actually just go for chickens instead. Uh, it feels like RNG will maintain that control. Yeah, I think for Weibo, they're, they don't feel too pressured about RNG just trying to outright force a Baron or anything along those lines. Right, RNG still preferring to play around the Corky package timers if they want guaranteed team fight wins like they're going to have. And now Weibo going to try and answer with finding a pick onto Breathe. Breathe still in vision right now. The Shy just going to be closing ground. SOFM is here as well. And Breathe corralled into one spot. They find the stun. It means they can find the second stun as well. Breathe with the needlework trying to sustain. But, I mean, he didn't even return any damage. He was just trying to escape. It's another kill for SOFM. And the junglers, the carry-off continues between Wei and SOFM. 
512 versus 600. Which one will carry harder? Yeah, we're gonna have to find out. I feel like I feel like SOFM had that huge quadra kill, but it's kind of tapered. Oh, on. Quickness gonna I'm be fine. used here. Is on just gonna <laughs> zip halfway across the map. SOFM. I don't think that's a one v four that you really want to be taken right now. But I've been wrong before. He seems to wonder <laughs> as he finally decides to back away, shadowing the shy on this one, who will just crash that wave and leave the area as well. Two minutes on that Drake, which means Baron could be the next objective, but it feels tough for both teams to really force it. Yeah, just got a replay there of how it all went down. RNG trying to be the ones forcing some aggression on, having to pop his abilities to be able to get away. But now pivoting back up towards this Baron side. I don't know. It seems like both teams are just going to be trying to aggressively push for vision, but I don't expect either one to try to go for any sort of Baron force. Wavo especially, I mean, you have a bit of a turn coming through, right? You can have the quickness come out through on. It's like an Emperor's Divide, but still, I think it's not as guaranteed as something like Ming just being able to turn around and press his R. So RNG going to respect the fact that Weibo can force him out and knowing that something like a Baron shouldn't be able to come through and that instead Weibo just going to try and layer down this poke onto the members of RNG. Yeah, but Xiaohu can return that poke as well. Hong Fong and Xiaohu just trading projectiles with one another, doing similar damage as well uh, to each other. But Wong Fong will have that ult available every so often, and that does big poke, especially when you hit that two-item mark on this Ezreal. With the amount of CDR that you have, it's available so often. Yeah, he is uh, shooting out rockets as frequently as Hank Hill is selling propane and propane accessories, which I actually don't know how often that is, so that could be a total lie. Yeah, to be fair, I'm going to be honest, he doesn't sell that much in the show. I feel like he's trying to sell propane, propane accessories, but not necessarily all that successfully. And you know, Scarlet the thing is, around. right, a lot of the show is centered around his home life. Like, we yeah. don't see him at the office I mean, enough. He's got a pretty he, nice house. He must be fairly That's true. That's true. That's true. And, you know, in, in the words of our great colleague, Mizell, propane and propane accessories. Okay, sorry. Oh, I, I always thought the, the big Mizell quote was, yeah! <laughs> I, I, I've, been, <laughs> I've been wrong before. Sorry, guys. Uh, Mazel brought a bit of Texas to the LPL broadcast, and we don't regret any bit of it. <laughs> Darn tootin'. Uh, we, went to, we all went on holiday to Vegas, and hilariously, the week that we went was the National Rodeo Convention <laughs> for, for America. Uh, and so we were walking through, and, you know, Mazel just... He just got on. Like just you stick in. a you stick a cowboy hat on that guy. He's the friendliest <laughs> man in the world. He can just talk to anyone. Oh god, great times. Is are we, are we gonna get some shenaniganry? Much? Are we gonna get our own rodeo? Is no. But hey, dragon, dragon's up, and it looks like RNG trying to play a bit of the bluff game, saying, "Hey, oh. you can't go for this. We're just gonna start the the bear, and they have package." Rodeo on the top side is Weibo. Five players here. They can contest with the flanks from the solo lanes. It was all a bait from RNG. This is their bread and butter. But Xiaohu getting chased down here. Wong Fong trying to escape on. Finally goes down. True shot barrage across onto Xiaohu. He's low, but SFM wouldn't get a reset. GA in play, denying the BA go all in right there. And it means that just a singular pick for RNG is enough for them to start Baron again. Yeah, RNG just going to turn to this one right away. They got to be careful, though. Shao is extremely low. SOFM still has his ult available. So if he can find a way okay. onto that, they're that just gonna squishy commit. Corky. They're just going to take the Baron here. Still five strong. They could win the fight as well as SOFM. Oh. Considering going in, he actually gets the reset. A, actually, no, it was a GA. No, he didn't get the reset. I'm an idiot. I'm blind. <laughs> but now it's the giant trouble as well. I thought he managed to pull off the impossible, but instead it's just Weibo one by one getting chunked down. Gala Blast one more flamethrower to finish off another kill. And RNG now, they'll get a Drake on top of everything else. Really nice by RNG, right? They weren't trying to overforce on the dragon where Weibo already had control. They're like, cool, we'll pull them up towards Baron. It gives us time to wait out for the package as well. Everything pays off. They pick up the Baron, they pick up Dragon, and Breed should be able to guarantee the spot lane turret as well. Huge bounty as well as SOFM goes down. I got confused because I saw the kind of grayed out health bar, but that was the GA, not the reset of the yeah, and we, we do get to see how the fight started. Uh, Shahu with a huge package and on trying to capitalize. Wei doing enough to bring him down with Gala in the end. 
then getting chunked incredibly low. Sad that SOFMSW didn't connect there. Maybe he could have taken down Shahu earlier on, and then maybe that would have changed things. But like you like you highlighted here, RNG commit to the Baron. They have Ming zoning off SOFM. Gala even had a really nice Gravitum uh, lockdown right before to guarantee the hook to come through. But like you said, it looked like he was able to get it, but no, instead going down at the same time as Shahu. Shahu just luckily already having that Guardian Angel picked up. Yeah, but we, I mean, we pointed that out in the fight, and SFM, I thought he was going to go for that earlier, but saw the GA. Apparently not. Apparently he did not see that GA, or he would not have gone for that fight, surely. Then again, it is SFM. I've seen him do crazy things like that, so we'll have to see how this is going to pan out, because Weibo starts to feel the pressure heating up here. 3k lead for RNG is on. And it just gets railed once again. This is the thing. If you get caught by the Nautilus, you can't use all of that mobility. Angel going in. Oh, no. Oh, he fluffs oh, the combo. Oh. It's all going from bad to worse for Waymo. But for RNG, it's celebrations as they'll find three kills off the back of a whiff from the mid laner and a triple for Gala as RNG break open the base. I might just look for more as well because the Shy has just walked into four people for literally no reason. It's two more for Way. We asked which jungler would carry harder and the answer is Way every single time. Eight kills on the board as RNG take game one. That game was so back and forth for a large portion of the early and mid game. Then that one Baron fight pretty much decided the end of the game outright with like, like you highlighting Angel not able to connect with the Emperor's Divide. Heck, maybe even if he did, it still wouldn't have been a winnable fight for the side of Weibo. Sadly, Munch, they weren't a Stally in this game with whatever horse reference you made at the start of the day. But SOFM, SOFM tried his darndest. Had some really great early skirmishing. We saw some good things out of Weibo this game, even if they weren't able to pull it off. Uh, I feel like Weibo's always been yeah. a team we've been very critical of, so seeing them be able to contest, go toe-to-toe -to -toe in early and mid-game is a good sign. But at the end of the day, RNG, again, just the way they play around Vision, their setups for objectives, or, or just how they think in the moment, like how we can pull off this, this Baron play of like, hey, they're already down towards Dragon, get this going, it buys time for the Corky package, we have things like the TP to come in. Just overall, once again, seeing the smarts of RNG. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like you say, Weibo, less of a stallion this game, more of a Shetland pony, I would say. Is, uh, we, we had we had SOFM trying to stand this in the early game, but that's kind of the, the downside of your jungler getting all of the kills as well. If SOFM can't just get those resets in a fight, like if Viego is the one with the kills, he often needs the enemy to be low already before he goes in so he can get yeah. those resets. And if you don't have anyone to, to chunk them out, like if Angel doesn't have kills, if Wonfong doesn't have kills, it can be very difficult to ever get those resets and actually carry the fight. I also feel like just the way RNG played what made it hard for him because they always had the formation of right like like a line of control words down and Ming just standing in front always kind of like mm -hmm. playing bodyguard against SOFM uh, not really giving him an opportunity to try and get in on the fight and right never really coordinating with, with the jacks to come in maybe try and find some flanks it felt like a lot of the times we were going in very disconnected and it just opened up for a lot of the ways that RNG want to find fights to come in or, or on getting picked off kind of yeah. going against his own words in terms of the get out of jail free card coming out from the Rakan and just constantly Ming taking advantage I feel like Ming having a really solid game on the Nautilus despite some like obvious misses and hooks early in the game his punish onto overextensions later in the game was huge and made up for it yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Ming being able to punish on time and time and time again. And on kind of not really learning <laughs> across the course of this game where I feel like we saw the same thing of Ming stood in a brush, on walks towards the brush, Ming hooks and on dies. Uh, Gala actually getting very close to topping that damage towards the end. In those fights, it was Gala doing a huge portion of the heavy lifting on the side of RNG. Yeah. Gala, I mean, even at the end, right, even when we had the Baron play coming through, just him walking up, tagging SOFM with one auto, turning back to the Baron, and then locking him down. I feel like Gala had a lot of, like, small, big moments like this, even having some really good Gale Force into Moonlight Vigil plays able to come through. But these numbers, not too surprising in any regard. Just want to highlight RNGs can play around objectives, just once again being so good this split. It feels like even yeah. if there are, like, small changes in how they play or, like, Maybe like breathe Hang again, on. not being this big attention I need to taker. interrupt you before this graphic goes away. These are exactly mirrored. Look at the highlighted stats. They're exactly the same. It's a pattern. <laughs> I, I, it's not important. It's not relevant, but I've not seen that no, before. No, no. 
I like it. Cool. I like it. Hey, and if cool. anything, it, it proved the the jungle showdown, the jungle rodeo that we had in this game because most of those stats being highlighted for both junglers able to come through. But Sorry, sadly, you, you, SOFM. Were, you were saying something about ah, RNG before that. Something about RNG and analysis. There's time for that in game two. I like you pointing out funny looking patterns. It's like uh, on a beautiful mind where he sees the numbers flashing up. It's like, oh my God. Except they are literally lit up. I'm not losing my mind. <laughs> uh, I swear. <laughs> um, good game one, though, for RNG. Stick it to what they know. Like we, we said, very, very strong team. Breathe doing a great job, right? consistently winning trades against the shy felt like the shy never really got a foothold in this game felt like he was permanently playing from behind like right from the very level the very start like lost the level one trades and then never felt like he quite got on top of the matchup despite picking the jacks into the quen as 